evening, everybody, and welcome to the Byron Hills Board of Education meeting on August 29th, 2017. Please join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just because Greg is not here, I just want to make a motion to appoint Jen Lamia as district clerk pro tem. Can I have so a moved. motion? Have a second? Second. Second. Okay. And all in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is our second meeting of the new school year, even though this always feels to me like the first meeting of the school year, because we had our back to school, welcome the faculty back this morning. And the board took the tours of the schools to see that they are going to be ready to be opened, and they're going to be ready to be opened. So uh, the kids. There was a rumor every year the schools weren't opening on time. Every year we used to have that rumor. <laughs> it was crazy. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, but our children will be back next week and one week from today. Yes. So, okay. Um, all right. So where are we? Four. All right. So the, just for the record, the. The uh, meeting was opened at 710, and the board went into executive session, and we discussed item 3.1, a legal matter, real estate, item 3.2, legal matter, individual employee, 3.3, legal matter, donation, 3.4, personnel matter, individual employee, 3.5, personnel matter, individual employee, 3.6, legal matter, individual employee, 3.7, legal matter, individual student, 3.8, legal matter, individual student, and 3.9, Legal matter, individual, student. At this time, are there any comments from the public of any matters not on the agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion to adopt today's agenda? Thank so you. In a second. Okay. And all in favor. And can I have a motion to adopt our consent agenda for personnel, special services, and business? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. And that is going to bring us to. To number eight, nope, nine, unfinished business. Okay, and we are going to be looking at, one more time, the Board of Education 2017-2018 board meeting calendar. We made just a couple minor revisions. Um, could I have a motion to approve the revised Board of Education calendar? A second? Second. Okay, and so the changes on this were strictly a couple of meeting times, that was it, right? It we was changed. June 5th and June 18th, and we changed the start time of the board meeting from 8 o'clock to 7.30, and the reception will start at 7.15, and that is the tenure teacher reception and the teacher longevity. That assumes we're giving tenure this year. Yes. That's <laughs> okay, any comments or questions? Okay, all in favor? Okay, so that is approved once again. And that brings us to new business. So. We are starting off the year, attached to your packet uh, were some suggestions for board goals that Jen put together, thank you for doing that. And um, the hope is we're gonna have a conversation tonight and we'll see how the conversation goes. But ideally, it, we'll, we'll have to get Mike's um, opinion on this as well. Um, I couldn't be here tonight. But the hope is that we would be able to approve it by the next meeting. So I'm actually gonna turn it over to you, Jen, if you don't mind, sure. to set that up for us. Sure, I think that we have some pretty robust goals. You'll see that the goals for 1718 maintain three of the goals from last year. We have the excellence in teaching and learning, the fiscal accountability and communications, and succession planning and leadership development. Although there are different components under each of those goals, which I'll go into detail about. An additional goal for this year is negotiations. It's a big negotiations year for both the Teachers Association and the CSEA. So that is an important goal I propose for the board. Um, if we take a look at the excellence in teaching and learning, you'll see that we maintain the STEAM initiative, but with our goal to evaluate our current course offerings and review proposals for new courses for the 2018-19 school year, and that's a K-12 approach. Student leadership is new. We're exploring this theme of global competency, particularly through the Global Scholars Program and a bunch of other opportunities that we have um, from different grade levels. We'd like to begin to study additional leadership experiences and opportunities for students. And that is important, particularly with our goal to create the leaders of the next generation. 
uh, professional development plan is due this year. Tim will be working on that um, to consider how some of our frameworks that are happening right now, new social studies frameworks, for example, uh, the K-5 math rollout, that will all materialize in this professional development plan. And last, something new and really fantastic, support the creation of a district-wide data team. We really need to see data K-12 and have a team of people who are working toward articulating that data from grade level to grade level. Did you want to comment about this at all, or do you want me to go through, go through all of them? I think okay. if you could just go through them all first, and then what I'd like to do for the discussion is we're, you know, one at a time, we'll talk once, just make sure everyone gets an opportunity to talk, and then we can go around again. Just Great. To I already discussed the negotiations. The next one, fiscal accountability and communications. Um, I know that a lot of the fiscal um, responsibility seems to fall on the board as a board duty, and you wonder maybe if, why is it a goal. Um, we'll still have a budget study and an enrollment study, but as per a request from the board last year, we really want to look at a per pupil mm -hmm. cost study, and we may want to be looking at that over time. And also, it's important uh, for the board asked last year for a fund balance review. Um, and this could be a good opportunity for the board to get that review and also for the budget committee to have some pretty regular meetings through the course of the year to take a look at the fund balance. And the last one, succession planning and leadership development. I distinctly remember last year um, the board questioning whether they needed a succession planning and leadership um, goal for the year, and it turned out that you really <laughs> did. <laughs> and it was a surprise, so it's a good thing it was still there uh, because you really did help with our succession planning. And right now, I'm thinking of that goal supporting new and transitioning administrators. Um, and we can continue to have a dialogue with the administration regarding succession planning. I think that this is incredibly important, not only for future succession planning, but current leadership development. What is not on here, which has been on here before, I think it's important to point out, um, character education. And I feel that we have really made great progress in character education and it's being infused in each of the buildings. So I think it's okay that we're not continuing with that as a goal right now. Sustainability, I feel the same way about. Education reform and advocacy, I feel that Scott is gonna keep us abreast of that and given the um, transition plan and, and things moving forward for the next two years. I'm not sure that we need to have the education reform and advocacy right at this moment. Um, technology implementation, we're well underway. One that may come up for next year, and, unless the board really wants to look at it now, is athletics and building use review. Um, and the last two were policy development. I think we're in great shape with policy. And the last is communication. And I think that our board's communication committee can really take over some of that work this year. So those were the items that I didn't feel warranted a space in the proposal, but you may feel differently. Right. Great, thank you very much. So I wanna open up the floor. Who wants to talk first? Okay. Sure, so I, I mean, I think this is a really good set of goals. And I like the fact that I think in pretty much all these cases, they're specific rather than general, meaning specific actions, specific initiatives, so I feel, I feel good about the overall list. On the um, fiscal accountability and communications, I think, and I, this is, this is um, a little bit of a tweak, if anything, but under budget study, I think I'd almost position it as starting with the five-year budget projections and thinking through what are the real potential risks to the district over the next five years from a financial standpoint. Some of them are listed here, like, Obviously, pension, obviously, health care, those are two big ones. Fund balances. But fund balances, um, also um, yeah. state, our state funding, because mm -hmm. there's a movement in New York State to rejigger state funding, so it could theoretically go to zero from, you know, we get what today, three, four million bucks. So it's really coming up with that list, and we don't need to be exhaustive about it on mm -hmm. the goals, but mm -hmm. coming up with like what are the key risks, identifying them. There's some risks that we probably can do nothing about, but there are some risks that we can proactively do something about like the state funding and you know, vis-a-vis vis vis lobbying. Um, so I think that just trying to be thoughtful around that might be a good way to, to frame the budget study. And on the enrollment, I mean, I think that the fact that we're spelling out here the impact on you know, staffing facilities, excellent opportunities for all students is key. Because we, we made some progress last year on thinking about enrollment. We probably have to go to the next level to say, now that we know the enrollment's declining, at least for now, 
what will happen when the smaller cohorts get to the high school? Can we still offer the same number of courses? Is that logistically possible? You know, do we have issues that we need to think about in advance so that we don't get blindsided by we can only offer you know, one English AP instead of three periods of English AP, that, that sort of thing. So um, I think the scheduling implications almost in addition to the cost implications. And you know, this may be a multi-year exercise, but at least to start thinking about some of that I think would be, would be good. But I, I really think overall this is a, you know, this is a good healthy list. The last point I would make is just on the district-wide data team. I mean, I wonder if one of the questions there is, is there almost like a dashboard that you create of like key statistics that the, that the um, superintendent's office looks at, that the board you know, can look at from time to time? Um, you know, does something like that make sense? We see a lot of financial data, but there's a lot of other data. Um, and that some of it's public, some of it's not, but that's, that's the question. It's just to raise, to maybe a, a team like that can think about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think overall they look great. Um, they're actionable. They're specific. Um, the data-wide, um, the district-wide data team, I love putting that there. I'm just wondering if the per-pupil cost study belongs under there. So it's part of data analysis and maybe could be lumped under that. Um, yeah, I think we were looking, just to clarify, at student data. Under district under the district wide data okay. team, right? Okay, and then um, yeah, I think the succession mm -hmm. planning and leadership. Thank God we had it because you know, and it's a testament to how well we did that because we only had to pull in one with the leadership positions, only one new person, right? Right. right. The others were all yeah all internal. part of succession planning. So I think we you know we did a great job, and we need to continue to have that in place. Thanks. That's it. Yeah. Um, I, I just, um, you know, I feel very, it's very important that with the professional development plan, I don't know, that can be sort of widened a bit because I feel that um, the continuing education opportunities afforded in our district are so amazing. It's Paragon, and I don't know, it just talks a little bit about the math rollout and the science, but it's just, there's always so many opportunities, and it, I don't know if we can sort of widen that a bit. Um, just because of everything that's done here that, that Tim supports. And, um, also, the athletics, did we, what would you say? You're taking it out because of, what did you just say earlier? So, it, yeah. did, it's just one that has been yeah. um, in the past. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't taken out from last year. I think it's it, it was within the past five years. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Right. So we're going to leave it in or we're not going to leave no. it in? No, no. Well, I, I mean, it, it, we can if we think that it I think it's important. It was just something. Yeah, I think it's a, a, something that's pertinent and that we're going to be addressing, hopefully. Right. So, you know, maybe we should put that back in. But I'll leave that to Ira. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well said. Well said. Um, Would that be part of the budget? Study? I think, well, look, yeah. there's always the uh, play, I guess, between goal and ongoing work of the board. You know, it's, it's always sometimes hard to draw the distinction, but I believe that the building use athletic facilities, I think athletic facilities should uh, be part of what we're doing. Uh, I think there's enough to look at to warrant spending some time on it. Uh, it's, a, it's a dollar item for us. It's something that certainly in many ways presents a face to the community. Uh, it's something we're proud of, it's something we'd like to keep. Um, so uh, I would, my thinking tonight would be to have a goal dealing with a review and planning for uh, upgrades, whatever, and maintenance of athletic facilities just to bring it a little more to the forefront. Um, my second point is I am not in favor of deleting the advocacy leadership goal. Um, I, I think it's something that, as a board, you should be out front with it. Uh, I think uh, Scott is certainly interested. He does, he's, does, he's doing you know, a very strong job for us, but I think he's entitled to have the full support of the board on record for that. And, and that we do believe it's to, it's one a role that the Byron Hills Board of Education should play uh, in 
are dealing with other school districts, are dealing with the state as a general. I think we are very fortunate in so many ways uh, that we have the time and the effort and the energy to deal with advocacy and leadership uh, in matters dealing with that go beyond the walls here. Um, mm -hmm. I, I liked it when it was a goal before. Uh, I like it being a goal now. And when I look at the goals that are here, and I think I agree with those who've spoken before, I think they're very well written. I think they're specific. They lend led themselves to action. Uh, but a lot of them lend themselves to, I would say, uh, you know, general supervision by the board as opposed to in the weeds work by the board, which is fine. And that's why I think adding, getting the athletic facilities back in and restoring the advocacy, I don't think it's going to put any additional significant uh, uh, time strain on the board to have these as goals. Um, I know we'd like to keep goals down to you know, four or five. I, I respect that. But I'm just throwing it out there. That would be tonight my recommendation. How would you wait, wait, see? wait, one second. Let me, we're going to, just everyone's going to have a time to talk and then we can kind of finish it. Let's, let's just give everybody a chance to talk. Oh, first. Okay. Any time. I'm ready, I'm ready, me. Come after me. I'm ready. No, because I, I just don't want to forget what I was going to say. No, Write it down. Otherwise, me, otherwise, then not um, everyone gets a chance. Or, or send me a text and I'll read it before you ask me. Okay. <laughs> or you want, are we done? Uh, yes, thank okay. you. I agree that the goals are very concise and, and well thought out. I'm excited to learn about, with the succession plan and advocacy, how the mentor program, which is relatively new, develops, and also how the global competency, since we're in the cultural proficiency area, um, I, I'm very excited to see how that rolls out and how we can bring it to the, also all the schools, because that seems mm -hmm. to be a way of creating leaders for the future. So I'm very excited that those are highlighted in here. Okay, thanks. And I'm, I'm just going to say a couple points. I I agree about the athletic review. It feels to me like it's bubbling up now. It feels like now is the time, and I, and I feel like if we wait an entire year, I think we're going to miss the boat. I think things are going to come up anyway. And maybe not an entire goal on it. Maybe it falls under, I don't even know which one well, it I, under. I thought it might be a a bullet under um, fiscal, fiscal accountability. Fiscal accountability. Yeah. It, it might be because a few if years ago. If it's about ago, facilities and costs. Yeah, a few years ago we had, uh, that was one of our goals, I remember, and there was a, a study that was done, looked at all our, our facilities, something like that. I feel like it seems like it's the time again, especially since potentially in our next budget we may be talking about uh, a new turf field. So it feels like now is the time for that. As far as the advocacy goal, I hear what you're saying and you're not wrong. It's important and it's always important. Um, but my feeling is I don't know that it comes to the level of another board goal this year, only because we've got negotiations this year. Um, we've got some pretty hefty stuff. Yeah. And at that time when it was put in, it was put in because we were working with the PTSA and there were, um, there were opt-outs for some of the tests and all that. It, there was a lot going on at that point. Not to say that we wouldn't always still keep abreast of what's going on advocacy-wise. We will. That's part of what we do. But in my opinion, I don't know that it, it just bubbles up to a board goal this year. Um, succession planning, I think it's got to stay in here. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you said. I think we just need to make sure that everybody that's in their new position, they're supported and it's, it's going to be successful. So I think these are really well done too. Um, let's want to go around. Now you, you wanted to. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Ira how you're talking about the, the advocacy um, piece, and I, I agree with Robin. I, I'm not sure that it, that I agree that it belongs as a as a goal for the Board of Ed. And how would you see it as being different from the PTSA group? Um, oh. You know, what, how is our role different? How would our role as the Board of Ed be different from? I, th I, think what our, there is already. I, I think our role uh, mm. is much broader in terms of educational advocacy uh, yes. than what the PTSA does. The PTSA right. is strictly bound by the uh, limits, geographical limits of the school district. I mean, when we wrote the education reform a goal, uh, it really spoke about, uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the um, the goals that we had in 2016-17, uh, 
and I think also back to 2000, it was in 2016, 17, 2015, 16. Right. It was in uh, those, those, I guess those were the two years that they, that they came on and were kept. And, you know, I'm sorry, not I'm sorry, but when, when I read what's going on in Albany, I read yes. what is in uh, Governor Cuomo's head, I read about the regionalization, I read about the issue of combined services. I think we have to be out in front on these issues. I really do. I, I think and I, it's I, I, the PTSA. Is, I, I, I no, guess, no, no. The PTSA. I yeah. could speak to that because I was president and I founded that program for the PTSA. That um, historically, the PTSA has shied away from any advocacy groups. We didn't have an advocacy chair, and we felt it was such a, a prime uh, time to to develop that program because of everything that was going on with Common Core, and we wanted to bring communication to the district, to the parents, so they could have a little bit more understanding. So we wanted to educate ourselves about what was going on, just that we'd be privy to what's going on in Byram Hills. But as I agree with Ira, I think that we, as you know, and, and uh, that Scott goes to the Putnam Valley and all of that, that we need to be kept aware and abreast of everything, that, all the changing things that are happening in, in Albany. Couldn't that go under communication? Uh, I, 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 guess, I guess I can talk yeah. to, well, so there's a whole apparatus set up where yeah. well, uh, the board well, excuse me, excuse me. The floor is still here for a minute, so well, let me just finish my point and, sure. go and you go. Um, I don't see any conceptual difference between putting the advocacy and lead, in, 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 in leadership goal than the succession planning in terms of ongoing work of what we do. I mean, every year, I mean, if anything, succession planning and leadership development, I think, could be perhaps even, <laughs> I'm in favor of being a goal, but I could understand someone say, you know what, it doesn't, it's not here anymore, you know, what do we really expect to do with it over the next year or so, and it might be a valid point, say, Maybe not all that much, although we want to keep it front and center, which is what keeps us a healthy school district. It's what, you know, key, it, to me, that goal is uh, crucial to maintaining what I like to call, and I think others have called, the Byron Mills culture, which has served us so well in hiring internally uh, the best candidates and, and keeping it for the most part internal. And Jen has been a big part of that success. Frankly, I, I think the goals that we had a couple of years ago regarding advocacy and leadership are every bit important today as they were a couple of years ago and I don't see why I would drop so it So let me, let me just, let me run I'm this. So, I'm sorry, but I wanted to finish my point, no, Scott. And, no, it's and okay. And I mean, actually, maybe this is what you were going to say anyway. Were you going to say something about the advocacy role for, uh, that you are So I, I, I was, and I, actually, your comments committee? that you just made were really where I was going, which is that the succession planning and leadership really, in my mind, is the same thing, meaning that we are not doing our job if we're not succession planning. And, right. and whether it's on the page or not is almost irrelevant to me. It's just something that we have to do every single year, year in, year out. I see advocacy the same way because there are just too many issues that are right. potentially catastrophic to what we do. If some of the you know, Washington strategies around, you know, around um, you know, voucher systems come in, all of a sudden all these things on the page will look small compared to, to a problem that we have budgetarily. Similarly, if we lose our four million bucks of you know state aid overnight, like that's not helpful either. If APPR comes rearing its ugly head in about eighteen months and they do another iteration, that's going to mm -hmm. impact us. And regionalization is still very much an Absolutely. issue, and it's not going away anytime soon. So I think all of these things we have to be really thoughtful about. And I think that in a year where we have so much leadership change and transition, there's only so much we can ask of the administration unless there's a real crisis that we're facing. But from a board perspective, there's no reason why we shouldn't be completely, you know, focused on these things. So the question really is, you know, do we have it on the page or not? But I think that all of these things are of critical importance. And, and I, I agree. I think if succession planning is there, then this should be there because in, in, it's the same sort of thing in my mind. We may want to be, if we put it on, you know, fairly specific about some of the things that were focused on this year as opposed to two or three years ago because you know, the issues have changed a bit. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would agree with that. Any other comments for right now? Uh, I guess I'm just concerned about having too many goals. We want to make sure that they're that they're achievable. Um, and do we have? If we keep adding these things, do we have too much on here? I, I yeah, I would second that point. I, I I agree with that too. And I'm wondering too if the advocacy isn't maybe something that evolves into a committee. committee. Because let's think about this for a second. As that goal 
um, as a full board, what does that mean to us, really? What does that mean? Does that mean that we're, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it can't just be on here because we're looking at this stuff. We have to do something actionable with it. So maybe it is something that should end well, up being why, why, why don't we take? Why don't we take a little bit of time to think about it and see what, if it writes up as well as I think it does, and if not, then it doesn't. But uh, I'm not, this is the first night we're discussing it. I don't think we have a, a will we have to have the uh, goals uh, no, cast and tonight. So and we want Mike to be able to I would like to hear what the, the eminent Mr. Sanders has to say about this. But I think, look, we're having a good discussion. We have different point of views, which I think is great. Uh, let, let's keep talking about it. Well, let's see uh, if, if we can write a goal involving the advocacy that makes sense, that, that sounds like a goal. Uh, mm. And we can continue talking about it. Uh, I think whether we have four, five, six goals, Frank, in the old world doesn't really concern me all that much. If we had 12 goals, I'd say, yeah, somewhere between six and 12, I guess I get nervous. But I wouldn't be nervous with the number of goals. Even if we add the ones we're talking about now, I don't think we're overburdened. Let, so. let me just say, though, as a rule, the board has always said that four or five is the cap. Uh, so I think if no, I, 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 think I understand, it's, but this is a pretty hefty yeah. year. but. I just want to, before we move off of this, I just want to ask because there's, there was, I guess, two different schools of thought with the succession planning call. So, did, what does everybody else think about that? You think it doesn't need to be there? You had said right. You uh, but you see, I think, I think once it's here, I don't like the message we're sending if we take it off. Uh, I think succession planning, leadership development, yeah, it's always ongoing work of the board, mm -hmm. but. It's something we do very well. It's something the community looks to us to do. I think they, I think they, they to the extent anybody reads these other than ourselves, I think they'd be comforted seeing this as an ongoing goal. So I like to keep it. Yeah, I really I, do. I agree with you. I think having that front and center, I think it helped us last year. I do. We we check into it to see how we're doing with that. I, I personally, I think it should be here. But I want. I think it's very important because companies and other school districts will have a domino effect if one person leaves. Mm -hmm. Our school system doesn't have that because we have so many things mm -hmm. in place that one domino falls, none of them fall with them. Mm -hmm. So I think because we have such a strong succession plan, it gives our town a lot of comfort that there's so much support mm -hmm. that only one's gonna fall and we're gonna pick it right back up. I, I, think, I think to that end, I think the sense of relief in this community was palpable, frankly, when we announced that Jen was gonna be the superintendent. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think it was met with such widespread acclaim for obvious reasons. Obvious reason one, it was Jen. But uh, in terms of that we had the internal, the strongest candidate we knew was internal, I think the community, this is, this is important. Mm -hmm. It's important. Okay. I think that was an important message to, that we sent yeah. out was that they didn't get the job because they were internal candidates. Right. They, got the they got the job because they were the best person for the job right. in and all of been, your cases. And we've been planning this for and Yeah. We hired them because they were the best person. That's right. The fact that they were internal was because we hired the right people in the first place. Which is the plan. Um, I mean, I, I think it's very important to keep it there. I think it's, you know, it's something that is like the crux and, and the, the, you know, foundation of our, our board, of our district. And then the, the advocacy, I mean, that's an ongoing thing that we do. We, we educate ourselves, we keep, we, you know, we attend the regional meetings. I mean, I think that could fall in here somewhere. It doesn't have to be an, an, a, a whole other goal. Like, I think it can be a sub-topic some here, somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a continuing education thing. It's, you know, we're, we're constantly right. educating ourselves on, on what's going on okay. All right. in the state. So so now I'm um, going to suggest unless anyone has anything else to add anymore on okay. this. So it sounds like, just to summarize, it sounds like putting an athletic review somewhere, we want to see if that could fit so that we can all look at that again. Right. Okay. And potentially that could go, we said, in number three. Okay. And the advocacy go, we'll take a look at it and we'll, it sounds like we'll talk about it again. Mm -hmm. And then. Yep. Can we read these for the next meeting? Mm -hmm. I, I think so. Mm -hmm. Or it may, may, may be fruitful to try to put something down on paper for advocacy and then we can see it and decide. Yes, I'm sorry. That's, I'm, what, yeah. that's what I meant. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. I'm happy to help. That would be through. great. Yep. That would okay. be great. All right. And that way we can hear what Mike has to say and we'll have time to let it percolate a little bit. Okay, these were great. Thank you so much for doing it this way because it's to really help this discussion. Can I just summarize a little bit? So for the professional development plan, we're going to look to widen that a little bit. Um, 
we'll start with uh, what are the potential risks under the budget study, add that as an, an item, mm -hmm. and under the enrollment study, the cost and scheduling implications. Um, we'll look to develop an advocacy and an advocacy goal, and we'll put athletics under our um, fiscal accountability to look at a plan for upgrades and the current use of facilities. Mm -hmm. I'll make those adjustments. Good. Okay. Now do this was helpful. Thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Very, thank very you good. so much. Great. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Joan, oh. can you tell me you're ready. Oh. I am ready. Ready? Okay. I am ready. So we had an exciting opening day today for our teachers. Our students get to have an additional week before they return to school, but our teachers are, are much more eager than students. So they arrive a week earlier. <laughs> for and, obvious reasons. That's and are already uh, today meeting in, with faculties at respective buildings after the morning greeting as a whole district. And they worked on their emergency planning, which is very important to start our year and make sure our children are safe. So we had a very successful day. Um, tonight the board toured the four buildings and the bus garage to take a look at um, some of the construction that happened in libraries at Coleman Hill and Wampus. Um, construction on the bus garage, which we are happy to report is progressing beautifully. And the high school, um, the main office and a technology center. So that was a good tour of our facilities. I'd like to talk a little bit about enrollment figures. It's interesting. I looked at the demographer's report, um, which did project us to have 2,305 students this year. We have 2,346 students who are showing up at our doors. So that is 41 to the positive of what the demographer had indicated. Um, and when you look at them by school, there were 13 additional children at Coleman Hill over the demographer's report and 24 at Wampus. Wow. Um, really not significant numbers at HCC or the high school. Uh, but that was an interesting figure and these are compared to figures last year at this time. So we, while we were a declining enrollment district, we seem to be already moving in the right direction. Great. Um, some news to share with everyone. Homecoming is coming along uh, swiftly and quickly. Friday, September 8th. I'm sure I will see Ira there. We will have our community homecoming. And on Saturday, September 9th, we will have our athletic events. It's a really exciting time for the community to come together. Um, I, I am particularly fond of these community-wide events this past summer. The science department hosted an eclipse viewing at the high school, and I want to say we had anywhere from 150 to 180. It was 200, it was 200 so, yeah. people there, That's and great. it was a beautiful event to see all the science teachers come out, and the community came out, and were laying on the uh, knoll, looking up with their eclipse <laughs> glasses, and it was it was really a fantastic experience. Uh, would love to see more experiences like that for the community and homecoming is that opportunity. So hopefully we'll see everyone there. And then uh, you will get to witness yours truly playing in the Wizards game. Uh -huh. Are you going right. to it? Of course. Going to. Okay. I'm terrible, but I will. It will be fun. <laughs> that is... <laughs> I will. Gee, that was convincing. <laughs> in high heels. Uh, on the 15th, Friday the 15th, um, our Byron Hills Education Foundation is supporting the boosters, I mean the wizards, sorry, who are coming to the high school. So you will get a chance, if you can come out as a community, another event to see teachers playing against the wizards, um, which is a pretty funny event. It's, it's laughable and fantastic. Yeah. And the last thing is, I know that the board members who were here last year had an opportunity to hear Mark Brackett speak. Um, he's from the Yale Center of Emotional Intelligence. There are two opportunities this year if you would like to be a part of them. You could go to one or the other, or if you feel that you've already experienced Mark Brackett, you don't have to feel obligated. Um, there will be on Monday, September 18th, at BOCES, he is doing a session for board members and superintendents, if you want to go. Um, it, it's okay if we choose to do our other event, which is on October 17th. The PTSA is having Mark Brackett come as part of our speaker series. Um, so I think it's important for the board to know what that is, and I think many board members may have already heard him. And that is all I have to report. Thank you very much. Good, successful first day. Uh, I, I want to 
I want to say that I thought your speech this morning was terrific. Thank you. I really did, Jen. I thought it was one, really one of the better speeches I've heard, and, and especially a new superintendent speaking to the faculty and staff. I, I really thought it sent a great message, so congratulations. Mm -hmm. I thought it was excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And um, we will not have the Assistant Superintendent for Business report today. You already talked to opening schools, and then I'm going to turn it over then to Tim. Sure. Thanks. Um, two reports. First is uh, in your packet. I gave you a summary overview of our state testing data from last spring. It's the three through eight ELA and mathematics results, also the science in fourth grade and eighth grade. Um, this is just an overview. It's hard to analyze what it means. I will be putting it all in context at a later report in September um, where we can look at cohort data and look at performance over time and dive a little more deeply into it. But I wanted to get the results in your hand. We got it late this year. Um, I thought the end of July was always late from the state, and that's when we've been getting them. We got it in the middle of August. So these just came out. They were just released to the public about a week and a half ago. Um, looking at slide two, I'd like to point out that you see a low number for our eighth grade mathematics. I'd just like to remind you why we believe that exists. Uh, first of all, we do not double test in eighth grade math. That means about half of our eighth grade population who is enrolled in algebra take the Algebra one Regents exam. They do not take the Math 8, and these results are only the Math 8 results. Um, also, if you're looking at the end number up there, only 41 students were tested because 59% of the students uh, refused the test that year. We had high opt-out rates in eighth grade, if you recall. Um, so that number is not really a reflection of our student performance, and I'd just like to point that out. Uh, my analysis of this, looking at it, and I'm just getting into doing the full analysis, is that it's about the same as what it was last year and the year before. We're pretty stagnant. Haven't seen dramatic growth. Overall, from going back to the start of the Common Core test in 2013, looking at slide three, you do see an upward trend um, overall from 2013 uh, to 2017, which was the start of the Common Core test. Um, but the last year, it seems a little flat. And again, we'll dive deeper into that. But we can't ignore the, the test refusals. I included the summary data, which we gave you some preliminary data last spring. Um, you sort of see, we did go down from the previous year, but you'll still see that dramatic increase as you go through the grade levels. Wampus is looking at about 10% test refusals. When you look at the middle school, you're seeing you know, yeah. the high 20s. Yeah, yeah. Um, particularly in 7th and 8th grade. And we think a little peer pressure played into that. We had a discussion about that last year. Um, so our results are around where we are statewide, uh, with around 19% overall uh, refusing the test. Um, we still overall rank high. We have high rankings when you look at comparison district, and I put a few stats there. Um, I'd like to point out that we've been talking about our mathematics program, and we've been exploring new instructional approaches in seventh grade this year and looking at mean score in New York State our mathematics results we rank number one in the state in seventh grade math and mean scaled score so it's pretty amazing that we were making some shifts in our instruction I think it gives us confidence that our instructional approach will not have an impact at least on this metric in terms of state measurement um, we just like to know that it's not showing you know, a drop in rigor of the curriculum um, we'll do more full analysis in September. Um, I wanted to get the results in your hand. This is the first. That's great. Thank you. Second. Do you have any comments? I just a quick question, which you mm -hmm. can definitely defer to when we have the full discussion. Sure. It just looks like similar to last year. Yeah. There's just this like, statistical disconnect between Wampus and HCC. Yep. Now, part of it, there's more opt outs at HCC that could have an impact. There are a lot of things that could have an impact, but if you could just try to shed some light on, sure. on that since it's sort of two years in a row. Yeah, it sort of is. And Wampus has always been behind for many years. When we look back, we've always had the results overall. Sort of putting this in context, too, when we look at percentile ranking statewide, Wampus is still in the 90th percentile in the state, where at Crittenden, we're in the 95 or higher. In the sixth and seventh grade, right now, we're in the 99th percentile in the state on state testing data. Um, the eighth grades just dropped down because I think we have a lot of the right. test refusals right. there. Wampus, we're still in the 90th percentile, you know, maybe the low 90s. Should we be at 95? Possibly, and that's something we're looking at in the curriculum. I think it's possibly looking at rigor of the ELA and mathematics curriculum. 
Remember, we will be adopting and rolling out a new math program, which won't hit Wampus until the following year, but we will start staff development this year in mathematics. And we're in our second year of, we'll be entering our third year of a new literacy program. And I think we have to look at the efficacy of implementation is what Peggy and I will be looking at this year. So Peggy and I have had long, long conversations about the ELA um, and literacy curriculum, and we're going to dig a little deeper to see um, if we're implementing it the way it's supposed to be. I think that's where some of it may lie. Um, my second thing I wanted to mention was um, over the summer we had um, 13 teachers and administrators, thanks to the Byron Hills Education Foundation, go to Nicaragua for the service learning as part of our beginning to explore global competency and what that means and possibly looking ahead to what service learning could be for students on these trips. And it turned out to be an incredibly um, amazing professional learning for the teachers. Part of the program by the, um, um, by the organization Amigos, they provide professional development for the faculty. And that was something we didn't quite understand at the time or be thinking about, but the teachers came back saying this was amazing learning about how to bring, you know, what this was for myself and what I can bring back to the faculty and enrich the students with it. Uh, these teachers are really excited. And so what I'll be doing as part of the goal of looking at global competency is I'm going to have that team start as a global competency think tank. It'll be sort of parallel to what we had the STEAM team. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of the, uh, another committee which I'm going to ask to invite those teachers to with just the question of, so what do we do next? <laughs> What does this mean for us? What does global competency look like in our district? And how can we continue to build upon this? So we're calling it the Global Competency Think Tank, and I'll be launching that this year, starting with these teachers to begin with. Um, and we may expand it to more teachers depending on the needs of the committee. So similar to STEAM team, I think we'll sort of get some traction with it and think about where to go. And what you, you uh, during like maybe a curriculum conversation to report back to us? Certainly, well? certainly. So we're planning a curriculum conversation to look at the Global Scholars Program specifically this year, and we'll certainly I'll keep you updated on, on what What's we learned. What's the subject for those teachers? Are, are they all, are they? Someone from every department. So we worked hard to try to get Melissa really recruited everyone. We The only department we were missing was the arts department. We were really sad they didn't participate, but we had every academic department. Um, I have the names in my packet so you can see who So that, No, I think that's great, but they weren't all like social studies or Spanish no, language teachers. No. Like, we had a science teacher, amazing. we had a math teacher, social studies, um, mm -hmm. English teacher. And we had, um, in terms of administrators, we had Andrew Taylor who went with them. And that was a last minute, come on, Andrew, come on, here we go. <laughs> He's like, okay. Um, Melissa was part of that, Dwayne and Jen Layden, who will be teaching the Global Scholars Program. So it was, they were the ones who really brought That's this great. to life. That's um, great. It was an amazing trip. They, it was just living, really, with, they lived with families there. They, it was, it, they'll come speak about it. I mean, what they talk about, they, they, Jen and I met with them to, to debrief. And It'd be great if they can, uh, or you guys go to the foundation board meeting and give a debrief too. Certainly. Yeah, so we're, we're actually good. hoping to have them, um, we're going to have a, a night in October for the foundation, oh, and we're great. hoping to have them present oh, to Perfect. Them. Yeah, and we'll continue um, looking at global competency on the site-based team as well, so we can keep the district focused on this issue. Because we're at the very That's beginning great. stages. We're not quite sure what it's going to look like yet, but we're starting to feel what it could be like, and it's very empowering. The kids are going to love it. Was there a teacher from like a lower school so that's the global competency? We had, um, so another recruitment at the last minute was Don Selness, um, who's our technology teacher and the building technology coordinator down at Wampus, who's been doing amazing professional development with STEAM. So when Andrew decided to go, he sort of said to Don, why don't you come along? And because um, she's a really good thinker as well and big and picture. She's artsy as well. Yeah. So we didn't have elementary, that wasn't part of it. It was really, we were really close. So at least they know what's. But to come, like the excitement at the high school. Exactly. The and the think tank will help think about how we bring this out K-12 and also mm -hmm. through site-based team. So that's where we can do some of that district level work. Oh, that sounds great. I nice love that the site-based team will be included. Mm -hmm. I think of course. Terrific. I think that's terrific. Great to keep the articulation K-12. I think that's terrific. Thank you. Okay. And, and that's it for the staff reports, correct? Yes. Okay. And that brings us to board reports. And just I for President's report, just a housekeeping. If you haven't given Janine your bios yet for the website, Please do. Uh, we're going to get our pictures taken next meeting for that. And I then. Have to wear a clean shirt? Yes, <laughs> and a tie. You can shave. You your hair cut. Yeah. I <laughs> exactly. did. Exactly. My annual, um, annual hair. 
Okay, and I just uh, also wanted to bring to your attention in the board packet retreat topics. I know this probably sounded a little early since our retreat's going to be in November, but um, wanted you all just to kind of think about some of those things that were in the board packet, specifically the committee, um, the committee work. And uh, that is a topic that I'm recommending um, that we consider for the retreat. So if, if you can just look at what was in the board packet about that, uh, there's going to be a little bit of work that has to be done before that retreat. So I think the sooner we can kind of figure out what we want the retreat to be, um, it, it'll just be better because we'll have the background work done. So just, just it's really put in there just to start thinking about it, and we'll we'll talk about it soon. Um, now, I, I, if it's okay, I'm going to switch around 12.2, 12.3. Instead of uh, asking for committee reports just yet because we haven't really fully agreed to the committee assignments, I just want to read what the committee assignments are that we uh, talked about this summer. I'm just going to read them off for the record. Athletic liaison, we have Mike Sanders and Lara Stangle. Audit committee is the whole board as always. Budget committee is Ira Schulman and Mia DiPietro. Uh, Barham Hills Education liaison is going to be Scott Levy and Lori Kanner. Barham Hills Preschool Association Liaison, Mia DiPietro, Communications Committee, Robin Glatt, Mia DiPietro, Lori Kanner, Emergency Safety Team, Robin Glatt, Health Advisory, Mike Sanders, Policy Committee, Iris Schulman, Mike Sanders, Laura Stangle, PTSA Liaison, Laura Stangle, Town Liaison, Robin Glatt, Scott Levy, the uh, WPSBA Liaison, Scott Levy, and Legislative Action Committee Rep, Scott Levy and Lori Kanner, and as always, the delegate at the annual business meeting is to be determined if anyone's going to go to that. So I just want to make sure that we're all on board with our committee assignments. We're okay with that? Okay. Then, were there any committee reports to talk about? Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Okay. I, Fantastic. I, I think we should also thank Robin for your speech this morning. Um, yeah. I, uh, Thanks, I, I, I heard part of it in front, then the last part <laughs> I, I heard sitting in the back. Yeah. So most of the people actually were paying attention. They weren't on their phones. So uh, uh, thank you. I thought it was, it was well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, at this point, topics for future agendas? I have one topic, which is the um, per pupil analysis that ultimately will be part of our goals and that a lot of work's been done, a lot of good work's been done. Um, it would be great to have that on the agenda for discussion. Great. Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll put that on for an upcoming meeting. Okay. Um, all right. Well, 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 for that item, I don't know how much work is going to be required of the administration. Give yourself enough time to do the work and then put it on the agenda. Don't feel you have to jam it on something. No, I think we're ready for next time. Okay. Right. Great. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. And then communications to the board. There were three over the summer, but I shared them with everybody. Just a reminder, one was a student requesting um, Board of Education term limits, terms, not term limits, terms. The other one was, <laughs> the other one was not I didn't mean term limits, uh, parent <laughs> comment about the homecoming date, and then a member wanting to be removed from mailings, a, a community member who doesn't have students in the school. And those were the only communications that I received. Anybody else receive any? Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve our Board of Education minutes from July 11, 2017? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, any changes? Good start. Welcome. All in favor? Mm. And as I said, we, the Board met in executive session prior, and I rattled off all the items that we talked about. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Good night. Thank you for watching.